Welcome back to Mountain Connections. I'm very honored to have the owners and founders of Excitant Health here in studio all the way from Eastern Washington. We have Karen and Gordon Smith on the couch today to talk about how they are bridging the gap between patients and healthcare providers. Thanks so much for being here. Oh, thanks so much Good for having us. Thank you. So this is a really big thing that you are tackling. Tell me a little bit about the why behind starting this company. It is a huge thing, yes. Um, the why is that we've really recognized over time, I've been doing a lot of advocacy work over decades trying to build collaborative partnerships within healthcare. And what I've discovered over time is that we really still have a gap. No matter how much time has passed, we still have a gap. And that is that we don't have the patients and families really truly engaged. And that's because nobody's out there really coaching the patients and families themselves. The healthcare world, they get the opportunity to be educated and trained and have ongoing training, and that's so important and key. But what we're really missing is providing training for patients and families as well. So we recently shifted gears and decided to go really big and shoot for a massive culture change so that our, our public, our communities at large, can understand how to engage before they're in a crisis, when they can actually be able to learn which is so incredibly important. You started this company many, many years ago mm -hmm. after a really, really hard experience with your twin daughters in the NICU. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about that and why that spurred. Yes, this. yeah, that's such a great question. So 32 years ago, I had uh, twin girls who were premature and one of them, Jacqueline, died the next day. Rachel lived for four and a half months. And during that four and a half months, I was a practicing occupational therapist. And as an OT, we really ha have it ingrained in us to, to uh, promote independence and self-sufficiency. And it was really important to me to be an active parent. And it was at a time in healthcare when parents were really expected to be more on the sidelines. But I really didn't want to do that. So I partnered with a nurse and, and helped to move forward some change protocols. We changed a lot of protocols throughout that four and a half months. Unfortunately, she died of an infection. Um, and that also prompted another point that if we are engaged, if we learn how to engage effectively, maybe we can offset some of those, those errors by being vigilant and, and understanding what we can look for. And so that started my work, going and speaking in healthcare events at, at conferences and things, but it really wasn't enough to change a culture. Now, many things to unpack, I have so many yeah. questions. But one point that you made is that you want people to be trained and prepared ahead of a health crisis. Mm -hmm. But no one wants to think about being in the ICU or having a loved one you know, on death's door in the hospital. So how do you convince people to really hmm. think about that when it's something you don't want to have to think about? Being prepared before a crisis is really the key. And what we find is we're, we prepare for things every day going to the grocery store you make yourself a list going camping what do you do you make a list of all the things you need to bring you should be doing the same kind of care before you go in to see your doctor make a list of the kinds of things that they might be asking what's that condition like for you what were you doing the last week what did it feel like coming up here on cold and flu season for example if you present at a hospital with what might be flu symptoms and yet you fail to let the provider know that hey I just traveled to South America uh, last month you might be experiencing malaria which uh, you know might show uh, as the same kind of symptoms and what we find also is that the kinds of errors that happen in healthcare uh, as Karen mentioned we can play an active role in preventing those things from happening uh, we saw in a, in a magazine uh, here locally just uh, the other day that errors in healthcare is the third leading cause of death in America behind cancer and heart disease. And if people understand that their lives are on the line, not because doctors and nurses are prone to error, but they're human. And if they can see these things before they happen and maybe speak up and say, ask a, ask a question, uh, maybe slow the roll a little bit, then they can prevent something that might, might result in tragedy. And that actually reduces the sense of crisis when you're in it. You know, there's so many perspectives to come from when approaching 
severe health issues. You need to be an advocate as a patient or the loved ones need to be an advocate for that patient if the patient can't be for themselves. But then you also have the physicians and the nurses whose primary goal is to take care of that patient. Yes. They can't always be the one taking care of the concerns of the loved ones or mm -hmm. really always making sure they take the time to communicate because their focus is the patient as it should be. So you're coming in, your company's coming in to help that. How exactly yes. are you doing that? So we're coming in to create a real collaborative approach. So we, if, if we're creating patients and families who, when they encounter healthcare, when they land in the hospital, they know how to engage effectively. They know the questions to ask. They're not being demanding. They're being what we like to call respectfully bold. So the, the mood that we're creating throughout healthcare, and we also coach the healthcare professionals as well, is to put everybody at the table to show that everybody has expertise. And, and they're not taking more time of the physician. What they're actually doing is helping to narrow down the issues, to bring that magic piece of the puzzle that might actually trigger the, the thought process of the physician to, to have a better, more clear understanding of the context of what's happening with that patient. So it really does uh, accelerate the process of being able to have a good, accurate, rapid diagnosis and to help provide the right, the right plan forward that everybody is on board with. And that also parlays then into better follow through afterwards. And then what we're hoping to see is to show numbers that, that show reduced rehospitalizations and reduced infections and things like that. So ultimately, if everybody's functioning as a team, the physicians that we've spoken with who see how we do this absolutely love the approach. Makes a lot of sense. So you both travel, you're speaking. Who are you speaking to primarily? Well, that's really hard to narrow down because we are doing the full culture change approach. And because of that, we're providing uh, workshops within businesses because that also improves the productivity within a business. We're going into hospitals and providing the, the leadership coaching for hospitals as well as some frontline coaching for patients and families. We want to go into, which is in development still, we want to take uh, snippets of this into medical, allied health and nursing schools. We want to also have some online things. And then ultimately, we'll build a foundation that takes it into public schools at no charge. So a great vision. Where can we get more information about your company you can go to our website at excitenthealth.com and there's a lot of information there as well as contact information and we're also on, on LinkedIn and Facebook as well. It's really a great concept. Gordon, what has made you so passionate about this company? So I'm a, uh, a retired pilot. I, I was a pilot when I was 19 years old, a flight instructor. I went into the Navy. I flew for 26 years there and the culture that I found in aviation was one about teamwork. It doesn't matter what your rank was, what your experience was, we were all involved as a team member in, in the event. And I then went on after I retired the Navy to train what we call high reliability in a number of industries to include healthcare. And what I found is that we just weren't quite getting there. There was great strides in terms of changing the culture within healthcare to help doctors, nurses, all staff members be more present in their in their daily work. And yet we weren't fully engaging the patient. Mm -hmm. Patient-centered care is a term of art these days, and it has been for some time, and there are great strides being made there, and yet we're leaving money on the table, if you will, if we're not really bringing the patients and families in as full and empowered and engaged team members. Definitely, well thank you so much, Karen and Gordon, for being here today. Really an impressive, unique, audacious, important <laughs> goal. We wish you all the luck in the world. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. All right, check out Excitant Health online. They are doing great things to bridge that gap between patients, healthcare providers, loved ones, and making the whole process of your health a better experience. We have much more coming up right after this.